Good morning class this is your English teacher Sasanje I welcome you all to yet another session of English on YouTube wherein we discuss lessons from English honey dew text English supplementary text by the name it so happened and English grammar from time to time so today I've decided to take up the first lesson of English supplementary text with the lesson being named how the camel got his hump okay so class camel refers to the name of an animal you all are well aware of that i'm sure and then hump what is hump class hump is the rate per raised protuberance on the back of an animal okay you must have all seen some kind of raised protuberance on the back of an animal right it's predominantly seen in animals like you know camel and then ox and so on to add a few okay so this story will tell us about how this animal by the name camel got his hump it's written by rudyard kipling who is a famous writer and has written plenty of wonderful uh, children's stories and all this being one of them it's a shortened version that we are going to read now okay so without any further ado let's begin the lesson i will explain and read them out let's see what the lesson has got so this lesson as well class is divided into two parts what we are about to read now is the first part of the lesson we will be looking at the other parts as well so let's begin the first part with a bit of preface that are provided in the form of dotted bullets kept in front of us as you can see in your screens on your screens rather it says the world had just begun and the animals were walking for the humans okay it takes us back to the time when the world had just begun and the animals had started walking for human beings there was one lazy animal that did nothing and said nothing but hump so in the middle of this uh, phase where the world had begun and animals had started working for humans there was this one lazy animal if you are lazy you are not willing to work isn't it there was this lazy animal who did nothing say nothing but only hump one thing that is to be noted is the spelling of hump here and the spelling of hump at the tree tries of title is different you got to note that down there is a there is a purpose behind that there is a reason we'll find out as we read the lesson okay so what is the third bullet point even the clever jin was at his wits end so even the clever jin was not able to come to in terms with why this animal was the way it was okay while the other animals were walking nothing or no one could convince camel to walk whenever somebody would approach him what would uh, this uh, camel reply you know it would simply say hump h u m p h hump okay so not very pleasing to the ear if you want someone to walk for you all right class so let's just begin reading so i assume everyone knows what a jinn is isn't it class if you haven't you may take a quick look at the picture of what a jinn looks like i will just show it for you see here is a picture of jinn you see you must have seen it in cartoons and all like aladdin there is a famous cartoon of aladdin wherein he gets a magic lamp and then when he rubs it vigorously a jinn emerges out so you must all be wondering what a jinn is i'm sure most of you know but then for those who do not know okay see jinn has plenty of names like uh, genie genie okay the spellings are also different so it's nothing it's a spirit that has strange powers and can assume any form human or animal okay so what a jinn is a jinn is a spirit 
right class it's a spirit with special power what kind of special power it can assume any form be it human form or animal form there is the spe speciality of jinns okay thank you so moving on class now let's do the reading in the beginning when the world was new and the animals were just beginning to work for man there was a camel we here there was a camel and he lived in the middle of howling desert because he did not want to work he he ate sticks and thorns and prickles and when nobody spoke to him he said humph just humph and no more okay so what happened when the world began and the animals were just starting to work for humans us you know there was this camel One strange thing about this camel was that it lived in the middle of this desert, warm, howling desert, and he was lazy by nature. How could we tell he was lazy? Because the text clearly mentions that he did not want to work. Right. So what are the things he do then if he did not want to work? He ate sticks and thorns and prickles. Okay. He used to eat all these things. there are basically thorny prickly okay something that causes you it or gives you itchy sensation so he used to eat sticks and thorns and prickles and when nobody spoke to him he said humph and when anybody spoke to him rather he said humph just humph no more all right so it must be irritating see people are trying to have conversation with him they'll approach nearby him him and when they try to speak something all you would say is hump hump and just hump nothing else right that will be very very irritating for everyone presently the horse came to him on monday morning monday morning usually a day where a lot of work takes place isn't it people start working on high scale So presently the horse came uh, to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and said camel o camel come out and trot like rest of us okay so trot means to walk hard okay so on a monday on a fine monday morning what happens a little dog who has this saddle on his back a little thing used for carrying and lifting things on his back he approaches the camel and then says why don't you come and join us for a walk you have to take a walk and then get on with your walk why don't you do that okay this is what the dog asked the camel to do isn't it now how would the camel uh, reply what would be his reaction let's find out humph see the camel see what did the camel say it simply said humph and the horse went away and told the man okay class uh, just a second just a second yeah and the horse went away and told the man so a horse approaches and then asks the camel you know why don't you walk like the rest of us so the camel simply says humph without answering anything okay so presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said see you can clearly see here is the dog with a stick in his mouth isn't it so this dog approaches the camel and you know he says something what does he say let's find out so we are at page number 2 it says camel oh camel come and fetch and carry like the rest of us why don't you come and you know do work like the rest of us are doing carry something get something collect something okay humph see the camel see the camel answered in a rather lazy conservative and boring manner he said humph and the dog went away and told the man so the dog went away in a complaining manner and he told the man the humans that you know look there is this animal whenever we go and approach him to work 
He replies this way. His response is not up to the mark. Now, two animals were done and dusted. They approach the camel, but all they received in return was H U M P H. Humph. Okay. The camel would always say humph, humph, and humph. Okay. So, moving on. Presently, the ox came to him with the yolk on his neck. Okay. And said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And ox went away and told the man. So now finally another animal joins the bandwagon and, you know, approaches the camel to walk with them. He comes with yoke. I'm sure you know it's one of the agricultural tools, isn't it? He comes with yoke on his back and says, you know, Camel, oh camel, would you like to plow, loosen the earth, loosen the hard earth and make it ready for cultivation and everything like the rest of us are doing because the other animals are working. So camel had the same classic reply, it said humph. Okay. And then the ox also went away, dejected and then he told everything to the man. Okay. So now at the end of the day, at the end of the day, man called the horse and the dog and the ox together. So they had a council, some sort of meeting. See, the ox, the dog and the horse were all summoned by the man, isn't it? What will he tell them? Let's find out. He said, 303, oh, three refers to the three animals. He says, I'm very sorry for you. So the man is feeling sorry, feeling bad for the animals. Why? What is the reason? Why is he feeling bad? Let's find out. He says, but that humph thing, humph thing here refers to the camel. That humph thing in the desert can't walk. Or he would have been here by now. So, I am going to leave him alone. And you must walk double time to make up for it. Oh, So, there is this heavy hearted announcement for the other animal. The man says, because... This hump thing, by the name, this camel, as he is not able to work, what I want uh, you all to do, you know, you, the rest of you, you have to work in double shift. Means you have to do double time the work you are doing, so as to compensate for the time lost as your, uh, as the other animal, camel is not working at all. You have to make up for the lost time. That's what the man said, isn't it? What do you think? Will the animals like it, class? I don't think the animals will not like it at all, isn't it? So, how are they going to react? Let's read the next paragraph to find out the way they'll react. Here we are, page number 2. The last... The following paragraph, let's see. So, that made the three very angry. And they held a panchayat. Panchayat refers to council of five people wherein they sit under the shadow of a tree ideally to discuss on matters of dispute by coming to a conclusion hearing in concern from all the members who are having the issue of problem isn't it so uh, that made the three animals very angry and they held a panchayat on the edge of the desert so on the fine edge of the desert they held a panchayat they they you know held this panchayat so that their problem was heard of. They did not want to work so hard unnecessarily just because the hum thing was not working. So the camel was also invited apparently. So what happens? And the camel came chewing cut and laughed at them. Then he said humph and went away. See how Dare the camel behave that way? They had this panchayat. Okay, so, so the camel simply is, comes and then he says humph and then have had a big laughter and then he, he just walks away as though he was making fun of them. Okay, again he said humph and go, went off. Okay, so now what did the animals do? They were all frustrated and angry with the way the camel was reacting. 
not taking anything seriously at all and then using this humph humph and humph all the time right so what will they do deserts rolling in a cloud of okay presently they came along the jinn who was in charge of all desert rolling in a cloud of dust so now a jinn appears out of nowhere rolling in a cloud of dust in the form of cloud you know whenever jinn appears you must have seen in uh, cartoon movies and all he does not appear in full form there is some sort of cloud of dust associated with him not always sometimes okay so jinn was the in charge of all the desert means jinn was supposed to look out uh, for the way the animals were walking okay in the desert it desert it appears so jinn appears out of nowhere now what will the jinn say let's find out in the following page page number 3 of the english supplementary text see in the middle of the desert there are these animals and then here is the jinn we were talking about now what will they discuss let's find out certainly something right jinn of all desert say the horse is it right for anyone to be idle certainly not say the jinn so the horse asks the jinn you know is it right for anyone to be so idle so lazy how can anyone live without doing any work at all and the jinn says you um, you know what it's not right at all all right well class we are here well said the horse there's a thing in the middle of your desert with a long neck and long legs and he hasn't done a stroke of work since monday morning he won't trot okay so horse adds to the point that he brought up earlier he said there's this thing in the middle of the desert he has a long neck and has got long legs you know what he hasn't done a single work starting monday he won't walk at all he does not walk also he does not know how to walk it seems okay we say the jinn whistling you all know what whistling is isn't it that's a simple sort of sound you must have heard people whistling in games of football and normally people whistle while they interact with their pet animals sometimes isn't it so typical sound produce so we see the jinn whistling that's my camel what does he say about so the jinn says are it's camel why is he not working what does he have to say about his idleness about him being lazy so what would the other animal uh, tell him they say he says humph and he won't plow said the ox so the ox reported he said you know he keeps saying humph he does not want to work he doesn't want to plow very good said the jinn i'll humph him if you will kindly wait a minute so the jinn says well well now if he does not want to work i will humph him so there is a clue class what is about to happen something interesting is unfolding now so this comprehension check back on the understanding of the section that we have just read these are the questions you have to answer them on your own i believe let's just discuss them so here is a phrase reading i'll humph him apparently i have also explained what does it mean they have given a footnote explaining it says i'll deal with him appropriately or i'll set him all right okay because he kept saying you know i'll hum uh, hum 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 so the jinn said he would deal with him with taking the appropriate action that is necessary okay so this is our comprehension check let's find out the kind of question we are given to deal with first one what tasks do you think we are assigned to the dog and the ox what task could be assigned class ox of course plowing isn't it dog was picking up simple sticks and all so there you are i've given you a hint now you develop the answer based on this points second question says why did the camel live in the middle of the desert why did he live in the middle of the desert class 
obvious answers then what made the dog the horse and dogs very angry this also has an obvious answer owing to camel not working isn't it so how did the jinn know the horse was complaining against the camel very simple the jinn was mentioning one popular word which word does it we have discussed it plenty of times so we are not talking about that now moving on to next page the fourth page which will take us to the second part of the story and then there is this introductory preface with few bullets bullet item being unleashed let's read them the first bullet item reads the jinn remonstrated with the camel who said humph the camel's beautiful back suddenly grew a lump suddenly grew a lump which was camel's hump the jinn assured the camel's hump would always be of help not a hindrance something that creates disturbance or problem and then we have another word which you may find difficult to understand as remonstrated remonstrated means to protest or to complain about something if you protest or you complain about something what you do, do is you remonstrate all right so let's move on second paragraph shiv bhai starts the jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak you all know what cloak is isn't it class so he just rolls himself up and took a walk across the desert and found the camel looking at his own reflection in a pool of water so if you closely observe the picture at uh, on page 4 the jinn was nearby a pool of water he was kind of drinking water not jinn the camel beg your pardon and then here's the jinn isn't it so the camel seem to be admiring himself where is the reaction, uh, reflection of the camel this is the reflection isn't it your virtual image on a plain surface or a clean surface that is capable of reflecting light so now uh, what happened as the jinn rolls up himself in his dust cloak and takes a walk across the desert he finds the camel who was at in a pool of water and was admiring his own reflection right now the jinn approaches and says something what does he say he says my friend say the jinn what's this i hear of you are doing no work he says my friend camel what is wrong with you the other animals have been complaining about your idleness about your laziness whenever they approach you seem to turn down their offer of you know walking along with them what is this this is not how it's supposed to be all right the jinn sat down with his chin in his hand so this part of a man's face is his chin okay. let me draw it precisely so that you understand here yeah, this one the part just below the lips okay excluding excluding the neck yeah so now the jinn sat down with his chin in his hand while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water camel continued doing what he was doing so the jinn what did he do he held his chin suggesting he was thinking something by you know looking at the camel so he says you have given the three extra work ever since monday morning all on account of your idleness say the jinn and he went on thinking with his chin in his hand so he says you know you were given three account of or three different works since monday morning but you did not do any of them you did not accomplish a single work thanks to your laziness okay so after seeing this he he continued thinking all right by placing his hand on his chin and what happens let's find out 
humph said the camel so the camel has started the same trick again he said humph to the jinn also okay i shouldn't say that again if i were you said the jinn so the jinn was warning he said you know you're saying humph if i were you i would never have dared to speak this word again because this is kind of bone of con- bone in the this is kind of word that is causing all the problem that's the bone of contention okay you might say it once too often i want you to walk so the jinn you know gave him some sort of warning you are repeating this word again and again i now want you to walk okay and the camel said humph again so the camel continued he said humph again as though he was not caring clear but no sooner had he said it that he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into great big hump so here is the trick as he said hump again earlier this back was plain isn't it class now as he said hump again the gym the gin you know uh, bestowed him or gifted him this huge big hump okay h u m p now let's move on let's find out how camel reacts do you see that say the jinn so the jinn says you know after gifting him this huge hump he said do you see that that's your very own hump that you have brought up on your very own self by not working today is thursday and you have done no work since monday when the work began now you are going to work so the jinn says you know you can't sing about harm farm fun harm so here is your gift of harm from me just accept it since monday a lot of work was assigned to you but you did not do a single task that way that you were supposed to do now today is thursday what i want you to do is you just get to work right now all right now the camel will finally speak all this while one word the camel has been using just a single word and that was hump hump and hump now suddenly after getting hump the camel seems to have lost the usage of this word okay what does he say let's find out he says how can i you see miracle has happened here finally the camel speaks he says how can i say the camel with this hump on my back so camel started protesting he says how can i walk with this hump on my back all right so the jinn explains he says that has a purpose say the jinn all because you missed those 3 days you will be able to walk now for 3 days without eating so this is what class the hump on the back of the camel especially this part actually i'll just elaborate in the picture this uh, hump basically stores fat in the body of the camel and that is why it's able to you know walk through the desert for days without actually eating anything so this is some kind of a gift you can see so the jinn was trying to explain because you have been missing work for 3 days now this hump will enable you to walk for 3 days without ever craving for any kind of food you will be able to go on and on okay so he says because you can live on your hump and don't ever say i never did anything for you so he is saying now you have no nothing to complain about you won't feel hungry and then you can survive thanks to your hump and don't ever complain that i did nothing for you here it is here is my help here is my assistance for you come out of the desert and go to the tree and behave so he said just get out of this desert go where the other three animals are walking and start behaving yourself be social be conducive in approach okay so now what happens finally let's find out uh, by reading the final paragraph of the story he says and the camel went away to join the three so the camel like a good good animal now goes away to join the three animal and from that day to this the camel always wears a hump we call it hump h u m p hump now not to hurt his feelings so a funny note is being added it says in order to not to hurt the feelings of 
the animal ca uh, camel we have you know started spelling the word hump as h u m p hump so that his feelings are not hurt okay and says since that day itself since the day genie gifted him this hump it remained with him until this day it would continue to stay with him i believe but he has never yet caught up with the three days he missed at the beginning of the world and he has never yet learned how to behave but then nothing much seems to have changed with camel is what the writer suggests here okay but hump is one thing that changes isn't it so class this is a simple story about how the camel got a hump we got to know how he got isn't it because he was lazy so simple moral if you want to extract this don't be lazy whatever work is assigned to you just uh, carry on with the work otherwise you will have to go through special treatment in the form of punishment to get the work completed and the kind of punishment may not always be very ideal for you that is why it's important for us to get along with the kind of work we are asked to do isn't it so as it was simple and interesting story written by rudyard kipling let's take a look at the comprehension now based on understanding of the lesson there will be a few questions okay so comprehension check class here it is yeah what does it say let's take a quick look at the questions i'll just hand them out for you you have to try them on your own okay the camel was looking at his own reflection in the pool what does it suggest to you about the camel so the camel had nothing much to do he was just admiring his uh physical beauty you may say isn't it because if someone does nothing and then looks at his own reflection his virtual image on anything that clearly suggests that he is admiring his good looks or whatsoever you'd like to call it now moving on to the second question the first one is done the second one's here the camel said humph repeatedly how did it affect him it affected him in a great deal isn't it initially he thought the word humph is his catch word he would use it and said free he would obey no one do nothing as he wish but then later on it acted as the bone of contention for him because the jinn let's say gifted him with a hump of his own and then owing to that gift he had to continuously work right so that is how it affected i want you to make the answer a bit better i've just highlighted how you're supposed to write a third question here what according to the jinn was the use of the hump so the jinn simply state uh, the jinn simply stated that the hump would not make him hungry he could continue uh, working without ever feeling hungry for days isn't it this still serves the purpose i have already stated the purpose of the hump of the camel right now the final question what does it say let's find out there will be more exercise question class do not worry about that he has never yet learned to behave in the light of this what is the writer's opinion about the camel the writer believes that the camel has still uh, been living his life ideally okay now let's take a quick look at the exercise what does it say it says discuss the following topics in group can this story be factually true no the story cannot be factually true just discuss why why not isn't it question number 2 what according to you is this story about consider the following how the world began no why everyone should do his or her share of work, uh, work seriously how animals are important to humans how the camel got a hump this is the point class no not at all so which one obviously why everyone should do his or her share of work seriously this is the answer roman number 2 is what we are talking about this is the correct answer okay the story is about 
a sense of responsibility we should do our work seriously okay simple moving on to next why what did you do over the weekend were you generally active or idle what did we do over the weekend were we generally active or idle depends upon your answer isn't it then please check your bag before starting to discuss your answer yeah check your bag means there is a saying in english your bag is against the wall means let's say you are in a port of bother wherein you are not supposed to tell lie and no? all so before answering this question remember four words be true to yourself and then answer accordingly okay fourth question there are broadly two categories of work those who prefer to do today what they can do tomorrow very important point here class and the second class is those who prefer to do tomorrow what they can do today where do you belong very important serious question you have to do what is to be done today right now that is the most important time for you in seventh standard you learnt a story that already highlighted the importance of doing work at the present moment isn't it so that is what moving on think it over all the work is dignified there is no such thing as menial work or small work he who struggles is better than he who never attempts okay struggling is consider better so this is a simple section or segment class so all work no play it's good idea william faulkner so just go through this find more about this story okay so class with this we basically come to conclusion of today's lesson it was wonderful to have shared experience of this lesson knowledge and inputs of this lesson with you all thank you everyone for tuning in and watching keep learning keep working hard keep yourself safe and protected remember we have to defeat this virus wash your hands regularly eat healthy exercise do what is right thank you everyone bye bye have a great time